I'm so pale. I gotta go outside. You're so pale, is that what you said? Yeah. Yeah, what's your story? You live in Florida, dude. Not like me. I haven't been getting out much. I haven't played golf lately. I haven't fished much lately. I really haven't. Let's do this. Good afternoon, everybody. It's your boy, Chicago Sean, Sean McLaughlin. I'm the Chief Options Strategist at All Star Charts. Today, filling in for JC, the intrepid traveler, we've got Steve Straza. What's up, Straza? Not much. How you doing? You know, you're a better looking JC. You know, I get that a lot from clients. So. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. All right. So, uh, hey, this is Wednesday. We like to uh, go over a new trade that we put out uh, for people, uh, for everyone to see. Uh, and we like to go through our process of, of how we've arrived at this trade. And uh, during our morning meeting this morning, we were talking about the continued sloppiness in the market. Uh, it's really tough to make aggressive bets in, in either direction right now. Um, we just continue to see a very choppy whipsaw market. Uh, whether you're getting long or short, it's tough to sit through some of these moves. So, at least from an options trading perspective, uh, the default move in, in environments like this is let's look for some some premium selling plays, some delta neutral uh, premium selling plays. So that's kind of where our heads were at this morning. Um, and uh, why don't you kind of lay out the case for us, uh, Straz, about uh, how we arrived at uh, looking at the financials. Totally. So we joke internally, like our best trade for the past few quarters now has been selling premium. Um, so a lot of times when we have our internal calls on Wednesdays, we're looking for kind of some range bound charts, things that would be good to sell premium in. First, we were talking about international indexes. We were looking at EFA, um, but that's really at the lower bounds of its, I don't know, 12 month range, almost 12 months now. When we look at financials and you can see it more on the second chart, it's kind of trading smack in the middle of this uh, channel, it's slightly you know upward sloping channel that we're in. Um, so it's kind of right in the middle, and I, I think that makes it probably more appealing for selling premium than some of the international indexes that we we're looking at, right? Right. So our initial thought, usually in situations like this, was okay. Let's uh, this this might be a good candidate for selling a straddle. Uh, I'm sorry, or selling a strangle, which is when you sell the out of the money call and you sell the out of the money put, um, or an iron condor, which takes the strangle and adds protection a little wider out on either side so that uh, your risk is defined and you can't get hurt too bad if you're wrong. And so we started looking into it and I liked the idea of selling premium here, but my, the first at first glance, when I looked into the April, the monthly uh, expiring options in April, uh, which is kind of the sweet spot that you want uh, as far as timing goes with a short premium play. You don't want to go any further than say 60 days out to expiration and right. uh, and March expiration seemed too soon. So we were looking in April and while the 36, we have the, the 36 level highlighted in this chart here, uh, which, which feels to me like a good outer bounds for the range that we've been in for the past six months, selling a 36 put strike offered some pretty good premium. We had, uh, at the time that we were looking, we were we were seeing about 65 to 67 cents in premium that we could sell those puts for. Hey, for a $36 strike, that kind of premium is pretty good, right? And 67 cents might not sound a lot like a lot of money, but in percentage terms, on a $36 stock, that's not bad. You were saying it was all oh, on the puts, the premium was about double than it was on the calls? Right. So what I was going to say next is uh, after looking at those puts, then I looked at the upside calls and you know, I looked at the 41, the 42 strike calls. Uh, I was leaning towards the 42 strike because that would be just above the upper bounds here uh, of the ETF that was set right in the beginning of the year. The 42 strike calls, which were essentially equidistant away at the time, um, they were only selling, uh, we could have maybe gotten 27 cents, 26 cents for those calls. And and just, uh, that level of premium didn't feel, didn't sit right with me. It didn't feel like we were giving enough, getting enough premium uh, on the off chance or, or at the risk that this uh, ETF does go higher. So we were kind of going back and forth on it. And then JC goes, well, why don't we just sell the puts now and wait for a pop to sell the calls later? And I think we all agreed at the time, hey, that's not a bad idea. Let's do that. We don't, that's not something we normally do. We don't leg into spreads usually, 
But in this case, yeah, seemed like a reasonable idea. And, and that's how we left the meeting, right? So what did you find? You said you, uh, <laughs> so, uh, I, here's what happened after, after we left the meeting, I was thinking about putting the trade on, I was getting ready to put it on. And you and I, I think we're, we're, we were kind of chatting back channel and I was like, I don't know, man, this, this market feels a little heavy here. I feel like we could test yesterday's lows. And if we test the lows, we could, you know, we could see some serious breakdown here. Not that I'm sitting here calling for a crash, but I really felt that maybe if I just had some patience, I might be able to get some better prices for these puts. And so I just kind of sat on my hands for a couple of hours, uh, finally pulled the trigger about 30 minutes ago, uh, and I did sell the puts into the sell-off. I was able to get more. When we were looking during the meeting, they were selling for around 66 cents. I was able to get 72 cents for them by waiting, which was nice. I might, if I waited a little bit longer, I might've even got 75 cents, but. Close to the lows of the day in XLF. Right, yeah. So I was able to get 72 cents for them when I sold them. Now here's the thing. I put the trade on and then I said to myself, Sean, if I'm gonna, if I'm gonna look to sell calls, as we discussed during the meeting, if I'm, if I'm gonna look to kind of complete the strangle and sell calls, if XLF moves back up towards 41, which is the level we were looking at maybe to sell them, well, by the time XLF bounces and gets to 41, those puts that I sold in all likelihood will already have decreased in value by at least half, which is where I like to take profit. So what's the point of putting the calls on when the puts are already at their profit target? So where I landed, Straza, was I'm just selling the puts. That's it. Keep it simple. So from a trade management perspective, we like to take half off, right, on a double. And you're well, saying- and it's th in this case, it's not a double, right? It's kind of the mechanics are reversed because we're short the premium. I like to buy it back when I could buy it back for half of what I collected up front. Right. The reason being, we talk about this all the time, is yes, I could continue holding and, and maybe the odds are in my favor. Maybe the XLF is going higher and, and it's more than likely going to expire worthless. But the less value that that put has as it decreases in value, I'm still holding all that risk in case the XLF decides to reverse and go and go lower. And I'm not being compensated for holding that risk anymore. So I would rather just take the cream off the top, get out with an easy, quote unquote, easy. Nothing's easy, of course, uh, but get out with the with the quick profit and let somebody else sweat holding those short options all the way till ex April expiration. Because as we've said before, the more time you give the market to change its mind on you, the more likely it's going to happen. And I don't want that to happen. So this is a this is a hit it and quit it type of trade strategy. We just want to collect our premium and get out of, get out with a win. Well, always risk management number one. So that's awesome. Good lesson there. And then if you want to sell calls on a little bounce here, that could just be a separate trade at this point if you're saying you're going to take the puts off. It could be a separate trade, not the one I'm going to make though, Straza. But I look, I don't hate it if you want to do that. Uh, but me, I'm not. I'm just do, keeping it simple, selling the puts. And uh, look, the bet we're making here is this is not an aggressively bullish trade. All we're really betting on is that that 36 level is going to hold. But actually, I should point out, I'm not even going to wait until 36 to uh, to manage my risk on this trade. I'm actually going to lean against that low um, at the uh, that happened in, in late January, uh, basically where your green candle touches that bottom blue line. That's yeah. that corresponds with January 24th. That intraday low is right around 37 bucks a share. So that's the level I'm going to keep an eye on. If we close below 37 at any point between now and expiration, that's going to be my signal to exit the trade. Now, in all likelihood, we'll be exiting for a loss if that happens. But there is the potential. It could still be a win, right? Because we're short the 36 puts. And depending on how long it takes for that level to be broken, if it gets broken, Theta may have already done its magic and eroded the value of the, of the premium of those out of the money puts. So it's possible that these puts that I sold for 72 cents, if when we break 37, those puts might, might be trading for 50 cents. And so I could close it and still realize a profit. That's not the bet I'm making, but we could still potentially profit. Oh yeah, and here's the, the P&L graph. Let's throw that up there real quick, just to, you know, for completeness sake, uh, here's the, you can see where the strike is struck, 36. You can see where we are right now. We're currently around 38.50-ish. And so as long as we stay above 36, we're in the green zone pretty safely and we'll have a high likelihood of making making money here. 
from a technical perspective, uh, I really like using that 37 level because if you look at this little uptrend channel here, th that will be breaking, right? So the lower bounds of this channel will be violated uh, if we're at 37, so. There you go. All right, Straza. Well, thanks for helping me out with this trade today. Uh, let's see how it plays out. All right. Sounds good, buddy. Talk to you soon. Thanks, everybody. Uh, we'll see you next week. And uh, JC will probably, probably be back on the show on Wednesday. Take care, everyone. Mm -hmm.